In this video, we are going to talk about the best places to visit in Italy for a week. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Italy brings up visions of pasta, wine, gondolas, and the sun shining on beautiful landscapes just by speaking the word. It was the birthplace of both the Roman and Renaissance empires. It's no surprise that it's one of the most popular holiday destinations in the world, with so much history, art, exquisite food, and romance. Remember that Italy is nearly twice the size of Florida, so you won't be able to tour the entire nation in a single vacation. The ideal strategy is to pick a few cities and spend a few days in each of them. Another fantastic idea is to focus on one or two regions and visit both large and small cities. Here are the best spots to go for a week in Italy. Day 1. Rome. For most tourists visiting to Italy, Rome is at the top of their list of locations to see because of its past as the capital of much of ancient Europe and its current role as one of Europe's most active cities. The Colosseum, the Forum, the Pantheon, the Appian Way, and the Palatine Hill are among the greatest attractions, along with the Vatican's tremendous assets. Take time to experience the city itself in between seeing significant attractions like the Sistine Chapel and Michelangelo's Pieta. Relax in the Borghese Gardens, enjoy gelato on the Spanish steps, wander the winding lanes of Trastevere, sip morning cappuccino in cafes, window shop on the Via Veneto, and toss a penny in the Trevi Fountain so you can come back again and again. To see everything, you'll need multiple trips. Day 2. Florence. Florence, the capital of the Italian Renaissance, might appear to be one large art gallery at times. The Duomo, or Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, is a world-famous structure crowned by a gigantic dome that defies gravity. This is one of the world's best Renaissance art ensembles, with its marble-inlaid bell tower by Giotto and the octagonal baptistry with its outstanding bronze doors by Ghiberti. Paintings and sculpture abound in a half-dozen art museums, while more masterpieces adorn the churches and palaces. Before visiting the Uffizi Gallery and Pitti Palace, take a stroll through the Baboli Gardens and the Altrano's Artisan Studios and Workshops, or go leather shopping at Santa Croce. Day 3. Milan. Although Milan is a popular tourist destination due to its airport, it is frequently ignored as a standalone destination. That's a shame, because Milan offers one of the highest concentrations of creative and architectural attractions in all of Italy, and it's a must-see for anyone interested in design, fashion, or shopping. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Verdi, Enrico Caruso, Toscanini, and fashion designer Giorgio Armani have all called Milan home and worked there. The Great Gallery of Vittorio Emanuele II was planned by Giuseppe Mangoni and built between 1865 and 1877 on one side of Piazza del Duomo and on the other side of Piazza della Scala. With a dome rising 48 meters above its mosaic floor, it was Europe's largest shopping arcade at the time. It is a magnificent example of 19th-century industrial iron and glass building that marks the beginning of modern architecture in Italy. It's still a lovely, lively neighborhood where folks congregate for lunch or coffee in exquisite cafes and shop in high-end boutiques. It has become so ingrained in Milanese culture that locals refer to it as Il Salato, the Salon. La Scala, the world's most prominent opera house, has heard the music of all the great operatic composers and singers, and its audiences, the theater seats 2800, are known, and dreaded, as the most demanding in Italy. The season spans from early December to early May, however tickets are typically hard to come by. The best method to purchase tickets is through your hotel concierge, although the box office is worth checking out as well. The Museo T Trail alla Scala is located in the same structure and houses a collection of historic and personal recollections of the greats who have performed and whose compositions have been performed at La Scala, including Verdi, Rossini, and the great conductor Arturo Toscanini. If there isn't a rehearsal going on, the museum allows visitors to experience the inside of one of the world's greatest opera houses. Day 4. Tuscan Hill Towns. Tuscany's undulating landscape is capped by stone villages whose foundations date back to the Etruscans. Each is perched atop a hill, and several retain the castles and turrets that formerly guarded their strategic positions. It's tough to pick one above the other because they all have their own architecture, art, personality, and tale to tell. San Gimignano, with its many towers and mostly intact walls, seems much as it did in the Middle Ages, when it was an important halt on the pilgrim's path to Rome. 
Volterra was an important Etruscan center before the Romans arrived, and remnants of both cultures can still be found there today. Arezzo's tourism attractions are the heritage of the city's great artists, architects, and poets. Cortona, like Volterra, was founded by the Etruscans and afterwards by the Romans, but it also has a Florentine background. Cortona is one of the oldest towns in Italy. The proximity of these hill towns to the cities of Florence, Siena, Pisa, and Lucca concentrates many of Italy's top tourist attractions in Tuscany. Day 5. Herculaneum and Pompeii. Pompeii is a ruined city at the foot of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano whose explosion in AD 79 buried and encased the city in six meters of ash and pumice stone. What we see now, together with the nearby ruins of Herculaneum, is the best example of a Roman town and its way of life anywhere. It's simple to see why this is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Italy. Pompeii was heavily devastated by an earthquake only 16 years before it was destroyed, and its population of 20,000 people had not yet finished rebuilding. People began fleeing as soon as the eruption began, and just about 2,000 people were stranded in the city when the final flood descended like a tidal wave. Regardless of how eager you are to see this legendary city, it is well worth your time to visit this museum first. You'll see many of the objects discovered during the excavations that were either too delicate or too susceptible to weathering to be left in place, as well as helpful interpretative exhibits. Some of them date back to the pre-Roman era. The instruments of ordinary life are displayed here, including rows of amphora and other vessels, furniture, and various home and commercial objects. Day 6. Naples. The sheer extravagance of Naples will hold you enthralled, just as the canals of Venice and the Renaissance are the core of Florence. It's a lively area, with its small streets brimming with color, commotion, and activity. Naples, with its treasure-filled cathedrals, beautiful palaces lavished in the treasures of European royalty, and its finest archaeological museum showing the finds from nearby Pompeii, has plenty to see, see, and experience. Join the natives and take a walk along the shoreline to take in the views of Mt. Vesuvius across the bay, take a ferry to the island of Capri where lovely Sorrento, shop in the glass-domed Galleria Umberto I, and, of course, try the pizza Neapolitans claim to have invented it. Day 7. Turin. Turin, like Milan, is one of the great industrial cities of the north, but it is relatively small and tight, with its highlights easily explored on foot. The Savoys created the architecture and formal layout to show that they were as regal as any of Europe's royal families and that they could surround themselves with luxury that matched Paris. Turin's attractiveness is not limited to its arcaded squares, avenues, and regal buildings in the heart of the city. A modest medieval quarter, Roman sites, and entire Art Nouveau neighborhoods add variation, while a riverfront park with a complete faux medieval hamlet demonstrates that Turin isn't too serious. Don't miss the wonderful Museum of Cinema, which is housed in a former synagogue. Turin's contrasts, as well as its coffee shops and magnificent cafes, will enchant you. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.